Now on Saturday evening, BBC Two starts nightly coverage of this year's World Professional Darts Championship, being held in Stoke. Darts is a sport in which we have a British world champion, Welshman Leighton Rees, and he'll be attempting to retain his title. I suppose most of us, at some time or other, have thrown a dart, but it's come a long way from the public bar. Darts now offers rich rewards for the real expert. Eighteen stone Leighton Reese is built like a rugby scrum. But put a dart in the hand that's big enough to hide a coconut, and this 39 year old Welsh professional has the touch of a butterfly. It's easy to appreciate the concentrated aim with a quarter of a million pounds prize money available on this year's British circuit. Ten years ago, I played in the United Service Club on the road and played on Fridays and Sundays, but only against people in the Ponty area. If I wanted to play against people outside, I'd have to sort of uh, wait until a national competition came along, which only once a year. But then uh, the BDO was formed and um, they got us playing Super Leagues and County Leagues and Internationals, which opened up a big new area of dance, and meeting different people and better players. And the youngsters, are, especially now, the last four years, the youngsters have taken interest in the game. I'm on about the 18-year-olds. And, and I don't even know, the 14-year-olds and 13-year-olds are coming into the game. And uh, it's just shot up the standard. And I think a wonderful thing for dark players up and coming is the nerve element is, if you want to go out, play for money. If you can play for money, I think you can manage a big crowd. I see the top of your legs shaking and your hands shaking a little bit. Do you get nervous? Uh, yeah, I get my stomach turns over a little bit. I don't get so nervous probably uh, when my hands shake so much. Unless I play at Abbas 9 in the morning, of course. Darts at 9.30 breakfast time is Leighton's haunting memory of the recent British Open, when a half-empty Royal Horticultural Hall Westminster witnessed his David and Goliath demise at the hands of an unknown 19-year-old Scotsman called John Thompson. Leighton was 7-1, to one, third favourite to take the title. But it was too early even for the bar to open, and without the inspiration of a pint of lager, the world champion felt reduced to a mere mortal. Others had anticipated the problem. It's doubtful if the Pilgrim Fathers playing darts on the Mayflower could have envisaged a British championship like an assault on an entry in the Guinness Book of Records, with 1,500 players occupying 64 dartboards for 24 hours. A record of endurance irrelevant apart from confirming that darts is in the top bracket of money-winning sport. An estimated 7 million people play darts in Britain, with an exclusive band of 10 making a full-time living. Leighton Reese is the sport's most celebrated figure, though not its heaviest, since becoming the first professional darts world champion. But the price of wearing the crown is that everyone, John Thompson from Fife included, wants to knock it off. Was it tears of frustration or the last vestiges of sleep wiped from the eyes as Leighton struggled? For the gathering crowd, it was like watching Muhammad Ali being knocked out by Charlie Magri. Unthinkable, but not quite impossible. Without a mouthful of something to reach the parts that others can't, Leighton faced a sudden death exit. The first round defeat of the world champion was the tournament's major shock, and it was still only breakfast time. Even if I don't get it further, it's made my day just beating supposedly one of the world's best players. He is, you know, one of my, my idols as well, you know. It's, it's, as I say, if I don't get any further now, it's been worthwhile just going to do this. <laughs> A celebration drink at beating his idol had to be enough. John Thompson was defeated in the next round. But it isn't only prestige that people hustle from the world champion. When I was young, I used to go to the Bridge Hotel and oh, if you wanted the hustlers, that's the place to go. There used to be or a bar full of them, just waiting for you to come in, take it for a pint or a pound or whatever you wanted to do. Right? But I wonder if in some ways perhaps you're almost a bit of a target now and that if can you oh, find yeah, you can go it's, into... It is a, 
It is a little bit of the old Wild West show, like the, the gunslingers. Like I call them headhunters myself. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happens? I mean, how uh, do they hunt your head? Well, you, you've got a bit of a name and a reputation, and they just uh, that's all they want to do is just just beat you for once and say, "Well, I beat Leighton Mason." This is it. This is where you sort of um, you can't really relax. Well, like, the only place I can relax is where I live, and it's a ball and probably born a breed. I can go into any pub and play dance, and nobody's sort of after my scalp. Well, not my scalp, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my name and reputation. That reputation was cemented on the way to the world title when Leighton went out of 501 in 10 spectacular darts during his quarter final against Alan Evans. Leighton Rissi, I reckon, to be the unluckiest bloke not to win the news of the world ever. He's been at Ollie Polly for it three years, and he's never quite pulled it off. 137. <laughs> Drifting. Perfect. Beautiful. 134. Perfect first dot. Right in the middle. Oh, Velda. A maximum. 180. <laughs> well, Leighton, you really go in that town now. That's a beauty. Slide off. 85. Come on, mate. So Leighton, about 60 ahead. And oh, this is immaculate. 180. That's two on the trot. Two 180s by Reese. You will never see darts anywhere else in the world like that. Six darts placed with perfect precision. He's down. To a double already is Leighton Reese, and Evans has got it all to do. <gasps> 24. So Leighton Reese to go three to up wants double two. Leighton requires four. Leighton wants double two. Yes, yeah, shot. And the, the darts that won the world championship have recently been appropriated by a souvenir hunter and Leighton is struggling to get the feel of a new set. Well, I wouldn't like to put it down as a handicap, because uh, a lot of people say, well, they're a good dart, but they play with any dance. But what I'm trying to say is that I'm not trying to say anything. I'm just saying that uh, I've got a lot of hard work to put in between now and then to sort of knuckle down and really get used to my other set of darts to retain my championship. <laughs> throw a few darts during the championship, you'll probably drink a few pints as well, will you? I'll probably drink a few pints before, yeah. I like to get uh, warmed up, as one would say. Um, some other people in other sports do press-ups and backflips. <laughs> I just sort of try to get my left arm going a little bit. I like a few lagers and then uh, not too many, many, because uh, you've got to keep it clear in on, on stage, especially when it's uh, involved, what is involved, or three and a half thousand pounds, and also the a title, a good professional title. So a couple of laggers first, and then uh, probably um, if I win, quite a few afterwards. Our coverage of the Embassy World Professional Dance Championship starts at 10 past 11 on Saturday night on BBC Two. Straight after match of the day, in fact. <laughs>